They were just really easy going, just walking and waving. And I thought that was really cool. She's my hero, 1,000%. He has become more sensible, dare I say. Doing great, thanks guys. Straight off the plane, with two folders held close to her stomach, it was almost like Meghan was giving us a hint. This was their first major overseas tour, but as they arrived in Australia, even bigger news was coming. Oh, Pete, this is so exciting. After months of speculation, Meghan and Harry have announced that they are pregnant. How amazing is that? <laughs> Five months since they got married, they're expecting their first baby next spring. I, Megan, take you, Harry. To be my husband. To be my husband. With Megan past the 12 week mark, they've told their families. Now it was time to share that news with the world. <laughs> For an excited crowd outside the Sydney Opera House, the pregnant Duchess and her popular prince were too good to miss. Princess Meghan touched Camilla's hand. That's amazing. And That's will you remember it for the rest of your life? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Harry wanted to introduce his new wife to an old friend, 98-year-old Daphne Dunn, who he's met three times before. Oh, she is beautiful. Oh, I think we just have an understanding and just a, like a friendship. It's beautiful. And how did it feel to be able to congratulate them on soon to be oh, parents? Lovely. It was always to be expected that the news they're expecting was going to be at the front of everyone's mind. With gifts from the Governor General, Harry looked more bemused than Meghan and was rather coy delivering his first speech. Genuinely, thank you for the, for the incredibly warm welcome and the chance to meet so many Aussies from all walks of life. And we, generally, and we also generally couldn't think of a better place to announce uh, the, uh, the upcoming baby, be it a boy or a girl. So thank you very, very much. The weather wasn't kind to them, but this was an important working trip, dispatched on behalf of the Queen to show sympathy with the farming communities who ironically have suffered from months of drought. Prince Harry seemed in his element when protocol went out the window. The fact that Meghan had baked this family a cake, a sign they're doing things differently. Yeah, she made it last night when she heard she was coming to a, a family home. She had to bring a plate. And that ability to connect is a very powerful thing when you want to make sure the monarchy is still relevant. On Bondi Beach, they kicked off their shoes to talk about mental health and couldn't have seemed more at home. We met up with Michelle Wood from the Australian Republican Movement. She watched their wedding and follows what Meghan wears, but thinks the time has come to ditch the monarchy. We're hearing from all of our supporters, which have grown in number and grown in voice, that the time has come for us to cut the apron strings, if you like, and move away and become an independent country with an Australian in the top job. Ahead of the Invictus Games, Prince Harry conquered Sydney Harbour Bridge to fly his own flag. We followed his path to the top to take it all in. Admiralty House is where Harry and Meghan have been able to spend some private time in the spectacular setting of Sydney to really reflect, I think, on what this tour means for them. It has been their first major overseas mission and really it is a reflection of what their married life is going to be like together as working royals. Thank you very much for your patience, everyone. And welcome to Fraser Island. Tranquil Fraser Island was their next stop. But the Duchess had decided to sit this one out. Bouncing around on a bus, you could understand why. 
we advise our guests, you know, if you're sort of at that early stages or late stages of pregnancy, it's not advisable. But I'm sure just being here and, you know, coming over to the island today, it'll be in just enough of a carrot to tease her to come back. <laughs> With an exhausting itinerary ahead, Harry, who is used to going solo, had apparently told his pregnant wife to pace herself. But when the views look like this, you can see why she didn't want to miss the walkabout. Stepping off the plane in Fiji, this felt like another change of pace. Almost 20,000 people in the capital, Suva, to welcome them with the same ceremony they gave the Queen and Prince Philip back in 1953. It was up to their grandson to drink the kava, the national drink that looks like muddy water and isn't to everyone's taste. Their balcony moment was something straight out of a movie and worth waiting for in the rain. In true South Pacific style, they dressed up for what was meant to be Meghan's big day. Her first speech of the tour about women and education. It was through scholarships, financial aid programs and work study where my earnings from a job on campus went directly towards my tuition, that I was able to attend university. And without question, it was worth every effort. But it was all overshadowed when something went wrong in Suva's market. Her visit cut short, her female bodyguard telling her to leave, and lots of confusion about what exactly had gone on. Very quick, only 15 minutes. Oh, I see, I see, uh, only 15 minutes. It's uh, no good. I expected to be a little more longer to see all the handicrafts of the woman in Fiji. It was the first sign that this is new to her and her team. She has quite an inexperienced team around her in terms of her age, aside from her private secretary, Samantha Cohen, who is amazingly experienced and has worked for the Queen in the past. And certainly the police protection officers, the Metropolitan Police Protection Officers, have not been looking after her for that long. And I think that they decided that there were too many people and they were worried, I think, perhaps about her leaving, their exit, and they decided to take her out. It is obvious that they've got each other's backs. In Tonga, the public displays of affection that we've seen throughout were a surprise to this more deferential crowd. Normally for the royal family, there's a lot of protocols around that. Um, you would you'd have to wait to get spoken to or stuff like that. But here they were just really easy going, just walking and waving. And I thought that was really cool. Sing, sing, sing. They even got a fit of the giggles in the rainforest at an anti-mosquito song. Some have been surprised that she decided to go there because of the Zika virus. <laughs> Prince Harry may have his own fans, but it's Meghan who's really shone on this tour and attracted a very loyal following. You're such an inspiration to me. I'm like, you're just you know, this biracial actress, feminist, and that's everything that I am, everything that I want. And after she left, that's when I broke down because it was just meeting, you know, your hero, and that's wild. So she is your hero? She's my hero, 1,000%. We sat down with Governor-General Patsy Reddy, the Queen's representative in New Zealand. She hosted the couple and was struck by Meghan's ability to connect. It's so much easier to talk about diversity when you are the embodiment of diversity. And so she is showing that a person of, of colour, a person of mixed race background heritage can achieve uh, whatever she wants and that's a great model for New Zealand. The Duchess is starting to show us what she wants to do with this new royal platform, stepping up to speak at an event to mark 125 years since New Zealand gave women the vote. Because yes, women's suffrage is about feminism, but feminism is about fairness. 
Suffrage is not simply about the right to vote, but also about what that represents. The basic and fundamental human right of being able to participate in the choices for your future and that of your community. A speech that impressed New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who had a baby in June and was back in work six weeks later. There are still things that we need to do around things like domestic violence and pay equity. So having role models uh, from around the world, uh, like yourself, standing up and making statements around just fairness and equality, I think is really powerful. In the atmospheric setting of Rotorua, their final welcome ceremony was the most powerful. Prince Harry bowing in appreciation to their Maori hosts. The images have been striking. This is a couple who've done and said all the right things. It was always going to be fascinating to watch how the couple coped under the spotlight during this tour. Meghan could not have been more composed and Prince Harry has seemed more serious and statesmanlike. It is how they want to portray themselves on the world stage. But there are also other important roles they're now preparing for when they will become a mum and dad next spring. The royals never like personal matters to overshadow their official work. That has been impossible on this trip. They've been bombarded with baby gifts and congratulations. They've always been great with children. And now they've got a good reason to put in the practice. <laughs> Their final stop in New Zealand was a tranquil one. Only a year ago, they got engaged and you'd think they'd still be finding their feet. This tour has shown them to be a confident and impressive royal partnership, who together are now looking forward to life as a family of three. Enjoy. Thanks, guys.